and I'm Ron Wilshire, and today's guests are from the Clarion Hospital Center for Breast Health. Uh, we have John Straub, the Executive Director of the Clarion Hospital Foundation, and Elise Summers, a uh, physician's assistant with the, uh, the Breast Center. And welcome to the show. Thank you. I wanted to talk a little bit about, well, obviously the Breast Center, but also uh, you're a, a PA. If you want to talk a little bit about uh, what a PA is. Yeah, um, I'm a physician assistant, so what that means to um, healthcare is that I'm almost like a physician extender, so I can do pretty much anything that doctors do under the care uh, or supervision of a doctor. So I can see patients in the office, I can assist in surgery, I certainly can answer questions and um, for patients and things like that. So, um, it's a little bit easier to get a hold of usually than physicians, so it, um, it's a real good thing to have in a practice is having a PA. The real thing is that you're going to be a physician. Yep, that's correct. So I'm right across the hall from the cancer center. There's also a bunch of sort of somebody that can, that can direct patient care or a patient contact. So the title patient navigator is just sort of a, a, a title that they can give somebody so that the patients have somebody to get a hold of. So um, what the patient will do is they can call the office and me as the patient navigator can tell them sort of where they need to go next. So in relation to cancer care, they can say, hey, is Elise around? I am not sure what to do next. So I can tell them that they need to have appointments and then, you know, need to have surgery and can answer questions about surgery, follow-up appointments, things like that. So I'm sort of the patient contact so that, you know, to help them or navigate them through their care. Sure. Um, the Center for Breast Health Aquarian Hospital is... Um, a uh, center that we can take care of all breast problems or not having a problem at all but breast health. So certainly what people think of when they hear of a breast center is breast cancer. We do take care of all the patients with breast cancer that come. But also if you just want to have your yearly checks and your mammograms, you can come to our office for that. We see patients with infections of the breast. We see patients that have breast tenderness or pain. So we see all kinds of problems. In addition to no problems at all, they just want to have their yearly exams with us at the at the breast center. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Yep. And in addition to seeing women, um, it's not strictly just for women. Men have breast problems, um, and we see and have seen several men with um, breast health issues, and they're welcome as well. What's the uh, most common complaint you receive at the, the breast lump? I have a breast lump and I want some answers. So we, we take care of that. A lot of people have seen other offices and they say, you know, we'll just get a checkup mammogram in six months. Well, women or men, just people in general don't want to wait six months to get that answer. So one of our mottos is you have questions and we have answers. So if you're coming to us with a question, we're going to get you that answer as fast as we can. And there's probably just a part of a lot of concern in cases like this. Do you, in addition to the physician's assistant, do you have to talk them through it and ease their fears? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, care has changed over the years. Um, people get nervous about biopsies and things like that. Is it going to hurt? Is surgery going to hurt? Um, does the mammogram hurt? Things like that. You can call with questions. We'll walk you through each step. Things these days don't hurt as much as they used to. If they do hurt, it's just going to be a little pinch. Um, so myself and the rest of the staff will help walk patients through it and making sure that they're getting the care they need. Well, let's talk a little bit about the staff uh, of the center. What uh, There's yourself. Uh, uh, there's a Dr. Green. Yep. Yep. So there's myself as a physician assistant. There's Dr. Green. Who's the physician that oversees it? 
um, we have a secretary, Tracy, uh, Nurse Holly, and then a scheduler, um, and Cindy. So together we sort of get patients in and out the door in the care that they need in a, in a timely fashion. I've, in previous conversations with the uh, cancer center there, uh, uh, there was some talk about there's a lot a lot more incidents of cancer in the Clarion County area than, than other places in Pennsylvania. Does that apply to uh, breast cancer, too? Um, I mean, the only thing that we can really tell you is that we see a number of cases of breast cancer. Now, certainly, I can tell you that it looks like there's more, but that's because that's all I see every day. Not necessarily breast cancer, but breast problems. So, um, you know, that's something that we can certainly look at and try to People will tell you that. Right. So yeah. it's some of it, you, know, you never know where to separate the urban legends from the, yes, the facts. That's right. So since I see most of the cases um, of breast cancer um, or breast problems in, in Clarion County and the surrounding areas, that that's what it would look like to me, but certainly I can't compare it to other counties. Um, do you find your job pretty rewarding? I do. Yeah, um, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you like working with breast problems or, or breast cancer? And we can actually cure breast problems and, and breast cancer, whereas if you have somebody who has high blood pressure, they may have high blood pressure for the rest of their life, so you're not necessarily curing the problem. So I find it very rewarding to, to help women and um, actually cure most of them of their problems, of their breast cancer and breast problems. What are the advantages of going to a place like Clarion as opposed to to other cancer centers in larger areas? Um, you're not just a number uh, at the breast center in Clarion. You know, we treat every patient like they're a family member because that's how I would want to be treated. You can talk to me about anything. You can talk to me about your family or your dog or your cat and we're not just going to brush it off. We have time for everybody and we make time for everybody. So that's where I would want to go and have care. We also, the care that you get here is going to be the same as far as new techniques and, and things like that. You're not getting any less care as far as the most up-to-date research and things like that. Which, in addition to getting the most up-to-date that means you get the you get the benefit of having a small sort of county, small town feel to the to the center. It probably does become more like family after a while. And uh, so that that offers advantage. I know. In talking with uh, people at the the cancer center, uh, a lot of that family attitude and. Uh, Availability of all the services here is also an advantage because you don't have to take the extra time out to to receive them. Yeah, you don't have to travel far to get your care. So, um, so overall, how do you think the cancer center? I mean, the uh, center for breast health has been received in the, the Clarion area. I think it's um, been received real well in the Clarion area. People are excited that they don't have to travel to Pittsburgh or to Erie to get their care. Um, I think that we need to definitely get the word out. I think there's a lot of people in the Clarion area and surrounding areas that still don't know about it yet. And we should just want to get the word out so that people can um, make sure that they know there's a center closer to the area. Now, in terms of uh, activities that this uh, breast uh, center offers, are there any preventative or, or health type activities that, that you offer? Yeah, sure. Um, for breast cancer awareness, we're running these days called Pink Thursdays. Pink Thursdays are a day that you can come to the breast center without an appointment in the afternoon between 1.30 and 4. Um, you can have, you can learn breast self breast exams, obtain cancer risk assessments, schedule a mammogram of breast exams. Specifically, this Thursday, we're having um, uh, yoga taught by Barb from the YMCA. It's going to be a gentle yoga, which is just soothing and slower paced yoga. That's going to be between 2 and 3 this Thursday, October 25th. Um, i just picking something off the, off the floor here. On, uh, uh, you do offer a lot of information there, too, just if 
uh, if if anyone has concerns uh, that you know you don't have to make a doctor's appointment right away if, if someone has questions. Yep, yep. Um, we you can stop by the uh, the office and, and we can get to the information that you need. If you don't have an appointment, you can feel free to stop by. I'm not sure that you'll be seen that day unless it's this Thursday. Um, but we can certainly make an appointment and get you set up as soon as possible. Well, thank you. I'm Ron Wilshire on Clarion Connection. We're talking with Elise Summers from the Clarion Hospital Center for Breast Health. We're going to take a commercial break right now, and we'll join you shortly. When you need to get the job done, you want the powerhouse of engineering, reliability, and value that is Kubota. And right now, during our 40 year strong celebration, you can get financing as low as 0% APR. New Kubota subcompact tractors, compact tractors, zero turn mowers, utility vehicles, and tractor lower backhoes. Join the Kubota movement. A strong serving the American dream. Terry W. Kale, view their online showroom at twkaleequipment.com or call 797 1188. If you care about this election, if you have an opinion, if you want a voice, if you want to make a difference, if you want to vote, then show it. Show it. Show it. Show an acceptable picture ID with a valid expiration date. Because in Pennsylvania on election day, you need one. So whether it's a PennDOT issued ID, student ID, or passport, if you want to vote, you're going to have to show it. To learn more, call 1 877 Votes PA or visit votespa.com. Sponsored by the PA Department of State. SafeHuntingPA.com is your guide to safe, successful hunting in Pennsylvania. Small game hunters are heading afield, and the Game Commission urges these safe... Radio PA and the Pennsylvania Game Commission have teamed up to provide hunters with the latest information on archery, firearms, tree stands, small game, and much more. If it's about hunting in Pennsylvania, it's at SafeHuntingPA.com. Keep your firearm pointed in a state... SafeHuntingPA.com. Brought to you by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. Welcome back to Clarion Connection. I'm Ron Wilshire. We're talking with uh, two people from the Clarion Hospital Center for Breast Health, uh, John Straub, the Executive Director of the Hospital Foundation, and Elise Summers, the uh, Physical uh, Physician's Assistant, PA, from the uh, Center for Breast Health. Uh, Elise, do you want to go into the, some of the background qualifications of the doctor and yourself? Sure. Um, Dr. Green is a board-certified breast and general surgeon. Um, he received his medical degree from Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, did some of his residency work at UPMC Horizon Medical Center. Um, he also did some training with cancer surgery at Memorial Sloan Kettering Medical Center in New York. Um, as far as myself, I did my undergraduate degree from Trinidad College in Huntington, Pennsylvania, and um, did my physician assistant training at Cornell University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I did as far as my training, I did rotations all over after the East Coast, through Long Island, and then go and go and marry and tell me. Um, as far as work experience, I, um, I worked for a year in State College doing urology and, and care in, in a urological associate. And then I also was here in Clarion work for, or do work for the surgeon's office as well as the breast center. I did do some work in the cancer center, so I have had quite a bit of experience in both cancer care and surgical care. I was going to ask John about it. I understand that Dr. Green has a long association with Clarion Hospital. Well, he does. One of the things that he was, was very proud of to talk about in the first three years to be a residency in Clarion at the still trying to keep the new hospital new with uh, some of these uh, new programs. Oh, definitely. Um, that's one thing that I like to do with this foundation. That I get to go out and really work with the community and with the hospitals. Really means to it. Uh, obviously, uh, right now, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. It's one of the
guilty of the fact of declaring hostile again. But we're not going to be satisfied with where we were at a year, a year ago when we first had the new accelerator uh, actually the first contact on that. And so we were at one point with that, but with Dr. Green, I think that's what we can really try to say we're advancing the care. And that's really what it's about. When do you expect the linear accelerator to be here? I know you have to order these things long in advance. They just don't take them off the shelf. No, they don't. And it has a little bit to do with affiliations we're looking with other hospitals. We are working towards that point right now as far as what what could that they'll be using it to be affiliated with. But uh, it looks like that's imminent as far as we get the equipment. Then we can order it, and then it takes a couple. It does take a couple months as far as to put in place. And we were hoping we'd have the equipment ordered by about this time. But with some of the uh, things going on as far as uh, our affiliation agreements and things like that, it's taken a little longer. You know, some of the bureaucracy and stuff, even the small bureaucracy like we have, is sometimes up to get through. It, it will be fairly soon that we will be ordering board equipment. And maybe by springtime we'll be up and running it in a uh, hospital. We didn't have the radiation college in town and open it here. And that's what we're, we're proud of what we're doing in the community and we're trying to raise some money. But it, it really is, this effort really is to show what, what we mean to the community, but also what the community means to us. Uh, one of the things that, that we want people to realize, we wouldn't be doing this effort if we didn't think that our community hospital is going to be there for a long time. I know rumors go around all the time about UPMC buying us or somebody else doing something with us. That's not the intention. Our intention is to be an independent hospital. And that's why the people that were working with us to do this are really confirmed and on board with it. Uh, Dirk Gernwald's our uh, campaign chair along with Lisa Lee Scott and with both of them, I don't think they would be doing that, putting themselves on the limb if they thought we were going to be back, but it was going to be somewhere else. So again, that, that's why we're, we're committed to the community as well as the community is committed to us. And you're just in the pre- kind of preliminary or stages of the fun drive, but already it shows some promise. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, we're real happy, real proud of what we've been able to do already. Over one million, one hundred thousand dollars collected. Our uh, pledges not collected, I should say, but, but our pledges were, were put in the final touches and some fairly big ones that we are counting us uh, ourselves as that being a one point one in pledges. Uh, but, but those things alone show the commitment, and it's a two point five million dollar campaign. So at this time, that's why we chose to go out to the community to see what we could do with it. Um, and I know with all these activities going on, you see these in the community. Um, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is a very good time to highlight it, but, but it's longer. It's more than just about breast cancer. We even though we're talking about the, breast, the Center for Breast Health here today, but it is about all cancers and what we're doing. But, but it's a good time to highlight these things, activities. You know, the schools, the university is very good at, at helping us uh, highlight and fundraise. Also, the local high schools were looking at, and what they've done is it's outstanding in what these kids have done. But it's going to be only a small part of what we're going to have to do in the community. And that's why we, we chose to kind of kick it off at this time and, and go forward to the community. And that's one thing for a lot of these activities that they have uh, as far as these breast cancer uh, fundraisers or cancer fundraisers. Uh, a lot of it goes to the national, uh, you, you see about the national Susan Coleman and stuff, but a lot of these are for us. Uh, they, they realize the importance of research, but a lot of the patients we have now can't wait for research. They need the healing and the treatments now, and that's really what we're about, is trying to get those treatments for your, for your community, your, your family, your neighbors, your friends. In addition to the uh, organized part of the campaign with uh, people getting requested to donate, there's been a lot of community support. I 
just before the show, you were talking about a, a Tupperware cell. That uh, so, so the the fundraising community community supporters of all in many different ways. Well, it does. Like I said, it, it just it, the schools are doing a wonderful job. Individuals are doing a wonderful job. Even if somebody has an idea, I'm going to ask everybody for a dollar. You know, everyone's going to get. You know, you know, they can afford a dollar. You know, things like not silly things. Very proud to be that because what goes along with this is everybody has a story. Everybody knows somebody has been touched by cancer some ways. Uh, the community uh, kick off a little bit. We had with some people that were trying to rally the, the troops, so to say, a little army of, of campaign workers with us. That we sat around the one night with ten of us just talking, and everybody had a story. And, and we should have had broader Kleenexes with us because they're very touching. You know, they're, they're very solid stories of what people had, and just sitting here thinking about them. I, I, I'm proud of the people and what they've been able to do because if they're fighting through their, their sorrows or, or they're, they're proud to beat the cancer and they're able to do something and, and help, help their community in one way. Well, there certainly is a lot of pink out there. <laughs> yeah, and, and Thursdays I wear pink. I try to be part of the pink Thursdays. <laughs> well... And that's, you know, you, I mean, you can joke about that, but, but it's mainly for awareness, isn't it? Just to, that, you know, keep it at least in the back of your mind. Yeah, that's exactly right, Ron. It's, it's to keep, keep it in the forefront. And, and you see the NFL teams out there every Sunday now through October wearing the pink. And, and the university, even the football team, wears the pink on their numbers and things. And, and the people just try to get, that we're out there, we're out there to fight the answer and help save lives. Right, and so the, the caller wants you to prompt to take the next step. Yes, so I encourage everybody on Thursdays to, to wear pink. Let's just throw your support to the hospital. Now, with, um, in cancer and, and uh, breast cancer is certainly uh, a concern, but uh, you know some of the leading causes of, of death are, are other diseases too, and uh, it's it's nice to have a community hospital that can address all of those other problems too. Yeah, I think that's really what it is about here. The economic growth is to rely heavily on a good hospital, both from, from business aspect, bonding, and things like that, but jobs, good jobs, and what we can do to help make people aware of it. But it is, you want to be able to be close to home when you're here. And that's, that's what it is. Uh, the treatments, yeah, some efficiencies can be bought with if you go to certain centers, but I think with when you're really in the, the active healing, you want to be close to home, close to your family and friends. And you don't, you already sick. You don't want to be putting the burden on that. And that's why we are fighting to, to do what we can to keep this hospital driving forward. It's, it's one of the few profitable hospitals out in the community that, uh, field that we can show that, that yes, Clary is very proud of what they've been able to do. He touched on one subject. How many employees does Clarion Hospital have? There, it's roughly, the are fluctuates, of course, but it's roughly around 550 with the whole system, the healthcare system, the health services of Clarion and Clarion Development Corporation, all of them together. It's roughly about 550 employees. So, very easily, you're the second largest employer in Clarion County. That's right. That's right. So, that's why we're, we're, it's important to keep us going as well as us keeping the community going. So, uh, they're in charge of keeping people's lives going, and we want to keep the life of the hospital going. That's right. We appreciate all the help on that that everybody gives us. Um, what are some of the other challenges facing the, the hospital? Well, just well, definitely, as we pointed out, we, we are now almost to the point where now that the hospital is long. Uh, as we're at 7th Avenue, the infrastructure problems after 29 years, you know, keeping that up and, and running, uh, it, it's a big challenge. But probably the biggest challenge is keeping doctors here. You know, we are a small community and, and making sure that, that we have the right doctors to fit our mix of treatments, that, that we get those doctors in here. And, and they feel, especially the younger younger doctors, and we've talked about before, Ron, that they have all the infrastructure needed, including the broadband, so they can do more at home and, and, and feel more relaxed. Because if we're going to get doctors in here, it's a unique experience. They want to be able to live a, a, a rural life. That means being away from you know, 10 acres or whatever, some land out 
outside of town if they wanted to live in a suburb, they probably could do that and make more money down in the, in the Pittsburgh area. But here, they want a different lifestyle. And so we want to be, be able to provide that for these doctors. That works something else. I would imagine the, the management style is quite a bit different at a mega hospital <laughs> a conglomerate than it is at Clary Hospital. Well, that's right. I mean, because you have a patient who sees some of the bigger hospitals. We don't always have it here. So it's actually we try to uh, do some affiliations where we can where it makes sense uh, with some other hospitals. And then I'd say affiliations instead of any buyouts or anything. Because we still want to have those treatments as many much as we can here. But some specialists make it a little tougher. We want to be able to uh, uh, build our own efficiencies in the end, and that those challenges can be overcome, and we will. I was kind of excited uh, to hear about the, a possible affiliation from the hospital with a com- another community project, uh, a new Clarion County YMCA. Yeah, that, that's something we're investigating. The more we do things together in cooperation with each other, I think that will help. And, and we're excited to, to kind of keep on exploring that possibility with the YMCA. I know they're excited to work with us on this. And we'll help and maybe some other groups that we can be excited to, to be part of this. And that all plugs in with the uh, preventative aspects in healthcare to, to keep costs down, to you know develop healthy kids and, well, all of us. Well, um, and, and that's definitely part of the whole point of on that. Healthcare in the future is definitely going to take that more that tact than anything is, is preventative and, and what we can do to provide um, a, a base for, for ourselves to keep ourselves healthy. So um, the, you're tackling the health issues uh, on all sorts of different different angles. Um, so it's kind of exciting times. Uh, challenging. But it, it is challenging to, to say you go out the $2.5 million campaign in these times is tough, but, but it's always a, a good thing to help the community and, 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 and to do things that we need to do. Elise, uh, thank you for joining us today in Clarion Connection. Any last words for uh, the audience? Well, um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I, one last thing that I do want to, to say is now that October is coming to a close and, and breast cancer awareness will go by the wayside at um, the Center for Breast Health, it, every single month is breast cancer awareness. So um, we'll take care of you whether it's October or not. And they can just call you at the uh, Center for Breast Health? Yep. Um, the phone number is 814-226-1980. So you can feel free to give us a call. If you're not sure, just give us a call and ask those questions. We'll get to the answers or an appointment. Well, thank you both for joining us today on Clarion Connection. I'm Ron Wilshaw with John Straub and Elise Summers. We'll see you next week.